what, number one, obviously we know the answer to this, but is the law of attraction real? What yeah. is the law? Of, I got a couple of questions in there. Sure. What is the law of attraction? And can you explain, explain it in the most simplest way for anybody who has never heard of it? Well, we're about to find out. <laughs> <We'll see. laughs> you know, it's as real as the law of gravity. You know, most of us are not jumping off high buildings because we know the law of gravity works. And the reality is that everything you're currently experiencing in your life now is the result of the law of attraction. It's what you thought about, focused on, feared, planned for, spent a lot of emotional energy on thinking about and doing about in the past. You know, And so if you want your future to be different, you have to start thinking different thoughts and have different behaviors and different visualizations than what got you to where you are now. And that's the big issue for people. So the law of attraction is based on the law of vibration. Does everything in the universe vibrates. So even, you know, my voice is vibrating. That makes sense. All the radio signals we get, you know, and you can tune to different channels. You know, 81.5 on the dial is different than 93.6. You're going to get a different sound of music or a different talk show, whatever. So that vibration, when I tune it to a certain level, it attracts a different vibration coming into me. And so everything we do, every thought we have, every emotion we have is creating an emotional state. And that's called our vibration. And the highest emotional states are love, appreciation, gratitude, joy, you know, those kind of things. Enthusiasm, which means entheos, to be filled with theos. Theos is the root word of theology. So to be filled with theology, to be filled with God, you know. So what happens is when we're in a meditative state, when we're doing something we love, when we're in joy, when we're imagining that we're going to get what we want, we have a positive expectation, then what happens is we attract to us things that match that vibration. Mm -hmm. Think about where do you live? I live in Westchester, New York. Okay, so think about Westchester, New York. There's probably a street where a lot of restaurants and bars are located. There's kind of an area yeah. like that. And if you go down to that area, there are different bars that have different vibrations. In Santa Barbara, where I live, the farther you go down State Street, the more the poor people hang out in the bars. So on the upper end of State Street, you got the lawyers, the doctors, the bankers, et cetera. And on lower State Street, you have the homeless people, you have the bikers, you have the people that are not necessarily, that tend to be more negative, mm -hmm. that tend to have you know, more negative thoughts and, and thoughts of poverty, thoughts of lack, et cetera. And so each of those bars, if you walk into it, there's a different vibration. And so what happens is, those bars are attracting people of the same vibration, the same thought form, the same beliefs, the same whatever. And the same thing happens in the universe. You know, that basically if you're imagining being wealthy, you're focusing on abundance. Like I'm looking out my window, I have a glass window behind me and I see palm trees and leaves and there's oak trees and all kinds of pines. There's an abundance of greenery. There's an abundance of life. I have flowers. I have 40 trees on my property. I have, I, I decided I'm gonna count all the plants on my property sometime in a couple days. Cause I, I said, I don't know how many there are. I've been focusing on abundance a lot this last week. You're like, how abundant am I? I have 3000 books. You can see a bunch of them behind me. Yep. So I live in a world of abundance and I have abundant friends. I have abundant health. I have abundant uh, you know, money, et cetera. So I learned even when I didn't have as much as I have now to focus on what I did have, not what I don't have. There's an exercise I do in my training sometimes, Sean, where I'll put up the numbers 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, 13, 15, 17, somewhere. And I'll say, what's missing? And everyone goes, the even numbers are missing. And I go, no, nothing's missing. It's a row of numbers, 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. But we're so focused on to focus on what's not there instead of focus on what is there. You know, Joe Vitale, if you've never interviewed him, you should. He's one of the people that was in The Secret. And he talks about the idea that when he was really poor, he was living in one of those apartments in Texas, you know, where there's one light coming out of a light bulb with no, nothing hanging on it, yeah. sleeping on a mattress with a couple sheets and a, he had the plastic chairs and a plastic table. And he got a book from the library that was about the law of attraction. And he said, it said, you're supposed to focus on what you have. And he said, what do I have? I got zip, you know? And then he said, well, I do have a notebook. I have this book. I have a pencil. With this pencil, I could write my goals. With the eraser, I could erase my limiting beliefs. And he, he wrote a list of goals for the first time in his life and focused on what he did have instead of what he didn't have. He had health. He had the ability to go out. He was young. He, he knew people. So focus on what you have. You know, Martin Luther King didn't have a talk that he gave called, I have a complaint. 
His dream, he was called I Have a Dream. So he, he knew he, there's a lot he could have played, complained about. I mean, a lot. You know, they're trying to burn his church, trying to kill him, which they eventually did, you know. and But he focused on the dream that all boys and girls will be judged by the quality of their character, not the color of their skin. Now, have we achieved all that? Hell no. The summer's events prove that. But are we closer than we were when Dr. King was marching in Selma? Absolutely. We can walk over that Pettus Bridge now without getting, you know, beaten up by dogs and billy clubs and so forth so always 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 focus on what you have be grateful for it and then focus on what you want and put your energy on it and then here's the key when you're focusing on what you want which you should do through closing your eyes visualizing already have it feeling the feelings you would have maybe if you're having an affirmation i'm so happy and grateful that i'm now earning a hundred thousand dollars a year i've now got a podcast with a million people whatever that is like rehearsing for the person you're about to become. And you're sending out a wave to the universe says, this is who I wanna be. Please send me all the things I need to be that. And it starts to do that because you've given them an address for that kind of package to be delivered. I always say, if you, if you have a small mailbox and you order a big package from Amazon, they can't put it in your mailbox. You know, So basically you have to have a big receptive space, hands open saying, hey, I'm open. And the last thing I want to say about this is everything you resist creates resistance to the flow coming into you for what you want. So when I, and you know, it's easy to be angry at some of our politicians right now. It's easy to be angry at, you know, white supremacy groups. There's all kinds of things we can be judgmental about. But as, as soon as I start putting a lot of negative energy on that, doesn't mean I don't work to change it. But when I hate those people, when I resent them, when I can't do anything but think about it and see it inside, I'm attracting more of that. You know, Mother Teresa was asked to come to an anti-war movement rally. And she said, no, but if you ever have a pro-peace rally, I'll show up. Because she realized whatever you push against creates resistance back. And so you have to be for something, not against something in order to get to the next level. So it doesn't matter what it is, because we may not look at resisting something like white supremacy as a bad thing. But you're saying, no, Sean, resistance of any kind, negative energy of any kind, it's going to attract more negative into your life. Do, do, do I have that correct? Yeah, no, think about it. Think about, there's a, let's say there's a white supremacy march. Mm -hmm. And you go out there and you start yelling stuff at them. What do they do? Yell back. Yell back. And if you get too close to them, what do they do? Probably shoot you. Well, they could shoot you. They could push you back. They could hit you. They could run over a car. We've seen all of that happen this summer. Yep, absolutely. So the reality is I, I, I want people to make a statement. I want people to stand up. I want people to vote. I want people, you know, there's times for nonviolent confrontation, uh, like Gandhi did, like Martin Luther King did. You know, a lot of people got beat up along the way. I was in one of those marches. I didn't get beaten up, but I know what that was like. But the reality is that when you are resisting what is rather than working on creating what you want. I don't have to go and be in a march against the white supremacists to work for Black Lives Matter, to work for creating better education, to work for creating uh, you know, better opportunities for funding black colleges, whatever it might be that you wanna do, you don't have to be in resistance. Someone said, you know, quit fighting the old system, create the new one, you know? And so really that's what it's about. When I was in education, it would have been very easy to be against a lot of the policies and practices that were done in the Chicago area schools when I was there. However, what we did was we helped create alternative schools. We helped train teachers to do different kinds of things in the classroom. Instead of fighting the, the bureaucracy, we created alternatives that work. And whenever you have an alternative that's more attractive than the other thing, people will go over there. You know, you create a school that, that teaches, you know, it was a Marva Collins in Chicago had this school where she taught kids, inner city black kids, Greek and mathematics of a higher order, and they were all doing it. And the only reason they never taught it before is they didn't think the kids could do it. But when she said, I know they can, and she created that, guess what happened? All kinds of people came and said, I wanna know what you know, teach me how to do that. Because it was producing, in a sense, bigger flowers, taller plants, you know, bigger tomatoes, whatever. So that's what we wanna do. What's up guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. 
If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.